We just start the show off, and then we got some, some political activities going on. So, here, go, go ahead, hit it, guys. Well, thanks for having me on, first off. Ahead, really appreciate it. Love Stop. your show. Well, my name's Clay Defoe. I've uh, been involved as a city activist Please. for... Uh... <laughs> Ooh, we got a 
Lisa, who's Lisa? Wait a minute. Well, hello, Lisa. <laughs> hello, hey, Lisa. Lisa, how you doing, Lisa? Lisa. <laughs> got a phone call. Everyone says hello, Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> hey, wait, all the pizza. She's got to come down and eat some pizza with us. Well, Lisa's, Lisa's been active in a lot of things. And never mind. Yeah, I'm sorry to cut you off on you. No, nah, so that's fine. Please right. continue. Please, Clay. It's a trailer park. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, tell Go us ahead. about that's how, that's how we roll here. But, yeah, it's uh, I've just got involved in the city, saw a lot of things going on with the council and how a lot of times the city government tries to um, basically drive growth in this town uh, through tax incentives and rebates and special deals that you and me as everyday citizens, you know, would never be privy to. So got upset, got involved. And hopefully, you know, have inspired other people to get involved and, and make a difference. Good boy. All right, Ronnie, let's hear from you first. Well, how do just you say let it? me. I say, Ronnie, refreshed. Hey, but just, you do know it's puff puff pass, right? Oh, oh <laughs> of course, right. But but briefly, I just want to mention my friend uh, Clay Defoe. He ran for mayor. He Woo! was so hacked off at the right. city scheme of criminals. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Ronnie Reverteed, and, and I've been uh, trying to spread the news about what's right and, and how it's, uh, this war on pot smokers is nothing but counterproductive and hurtful to our nation. And we have, I think, over 40%, if not over 50% of people riding behind bars right now are, are there for nonviolent marijuana offenses. He thought that up. We're not talking about... Couple, couple of joints or nothing, though. We're talking about somebody with a couple of pounds. Or no, what? no. Nonviolent marijuana offenses. It can be somebody with just a couple of joints in their car. It's it's it's, it's crazy. I ain't thinking them throwing nobody in jail for a couple of joints. They do. They, 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 they they right. They if you don't pay, you got a warrant. They did at one point, but then they said with, with the decriminalization, they, they started to give citations out for that because of the fact that there was just so many people going in. Here in Austin, that's right, but uh, but but, it, it, but it's, 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 it's another it's, it's statewide and it's also it, it's virtually sta uh, statewide on, on that portion. It just they just started to decriminalize possession. I, I so hate to say, so but when you have a small amount. They say, okay, here's a ticket, get out of here. Ten for all, well, you know, I I I've inhaled deeply before. <laughs> when I first inhaled deeply, it was a felony for even if you had a seed. Right. So it's changed a lot. Anyway. Yeah, yeah uh, that's true. But that's. Is that all? Uh, you you talked to about a lot of things down the city before. So is that all you intro? That, that that's where they drew the line. I mean, they've. Uh, what was so annoying about it was I've introduced myself, you know, Ronnie, Reaper's Eve, many many times, at least a couple dozen times, and one day the mayor decided that he's had enough. We'll go into that into that part okay. later. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, I know you got the the other sticker on the other side there about the. Uh, the weirdo, the, the fluoride. Fluoride, boy, that's another issue. Oh my issue. goodness, we have a special guest in the studio. Yeah, I did. <laughs> come, tell, come on out. He wants we to... have a special guest in the studio. Come oh. here. Uh, come here real quick. Well, while we're doing that, you want to say anything? Yes. Um, we, I want to say uh, welcome to a couple of viewers that we, that we have now that are watching online. One of them is a friend uh, by the name of Lisa who's watching from Tennessee. The other one is, is a very special friend of mine who, who is actually my daughter's boo, as I like to call him now. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, his, name is, his, his name is Howard, and Howard, uh, welcome, and uh, listen and, and enjoy. Yeah, and remember, he <laughs> does Oh, uh, customer, glad you're feeling better. And I have to take the taxpayers, because look what they got me now. I can go walking around without the cane. And I am, uh, and I am uh, eligible for a little electric thing down there to be a but we decided to go this way so I can exercise more and once you go in those electric carts <laughs> all right, well, go ahead. exercise she's <laughs> playing planes and all I do all day is sit in front of the computer and the key word is exercise they told him to exercise to slow exercise. the progression of his disease so I have been vindicated <laughs> I have been vindicated today yeah. probably went in one ear and out the other but he's supposed no. to be we're going to start 20 minutes a day. Uh, hold on. I, I, thought it was, I thought it was uh, a few minutes a day. you got to build up to 20 minutes a day. He's got to walk. So this will help me walk. <laughs> they would give me an electric card if I wanted, which I really got to brag about the VA. They never. But <laughs> exercise. 
size is the word. Well, it's, it's, it's a good word. It, it is appreciated. Uh, uh, about the most significant thing I did was wash pots and pans on an aircraft carrier. That's my biggest contribution, I think, to the war effort. At least you signed up and you served, so that's a good thing. Yeah, that's, Lisa that's more than most can say. I think Lisa's calling again. Well, anyway, it's paid off like this so well. Uh, <laughs> the hospital, these oxygen tanks, all this shit can't be cheap. And now I don't have to worry about Obamacare. <laughs> and, lucky. you know, I spent Christmas in the hospital, that'd be thousands of dollars. They just, and the VA didn't say nothing, just whatever it takes. So I really appreciate them and all the taxpayers who are funding it. Because that's a really good, uh, thank you. Yeah. Anyway, all right, right and we proceed well, that kicked Real quick, right. before we forget, we got to introduce uh, yeah. Michael. Uh, Michael Cardinal, well, really. Central Texas Gunner. Oh, work. yeah, well, he's, woohoo, I'll save my stuff for the last, for last. Oh, okay. And Gavino ain't here. Oh, but, yeah. we, but we do have another guest sitting in the audience well, and come on in and who's say afraid something. to come yeah. forward. Come on, come on up. Come on. Come on. It's okay. Come up. Say hi. Come on. Come on. Real come quick. On. Real quick. Come on. Come on. You got to speak up a little though. That's right. You, come on over. The microphone or something. There we go. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Cool. Woohoo. <laughs> okay, go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> quick entrance, quick exit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, go ahead and read your little three minute thing. Okay, we'll do this in, in, in the honor of Lee, Lee Leavenwell. Three or four minutes, I'm <laughs> sorry. But, but uh, thank you. You said three minutes. Who has, who has well, uh, now, hold on. We, we, we gotta, uh, gotta preface this as to why he's doing this. Okay, this is what I normally do when I uh, approach the Austin City uh, Council uh, Terminal. Before he does that, usually when he do the City Hall, like I tell you, I listen about one minute of it, and then I think, this guy's nuts. <laughs> he smokes too much weed, but that part they understand. So here's your yeah, okay, yeah. okay, but, okay, so this is something that you're, you're allowed to do. Come before the city three council. Minutes. We'll get into that, you, too. You, you get your three minutes to speak. Okay, all right. So first, Normally it takes four pages. I ran into five today. But anyway, <laughs> I wanted to tell you. Uh, no that, one in America can count. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, I think it's a money well spent for you. I just wanted to make that comment. But anyway, <laughs> yes, I'm Ronnie Reavers Eid, and my name is my very own nonviolent weapon of mass persuasion. You see, my pronunciation of my own name is Ronnie Reavers Eid is a humor-based literary device, technically a pun, that ref refers to a real person from U.S. history, also known as Johnny Appleseed. In fact. On the front page of a recent issue of NACOA, that literary gem of a local newspaper, especially marketed for blacks here in Austin, Texas, referred to me as Johnny Reeverseed. Perhaps the name Johnny Reeverseed is more effective as a more obvious pun in reference to the actual historic person, Johnny Appleseed, who for years tirelessly worked to promote the nationwide cultivation of apples for farmers across the United States. And of course, for years now, I have been working on behalf of struggling family farmers to liberate them with an even more multi-use, beneficial, easy-to-grow cash crop, hemp marijuana. Strong, profitable family farms helps our nation's national security because hopefully organic crops grown here in a good way is a good way to help promote self-sufficiency instead of all of us relying only on those multinational conglomerate corporations like such as the truly evil Monsatano who promote largely pesticide-laden high-profit GMO, GMO spoiled crops that will only kill and sterilize all of us over time. Monsatano is truly satanic from top to, bond, from top to bottom in my opinion but organic free from pesticides, self-sufficient family farms here all over the United States are our best hope for a strong, healthy future. And yet the recent capture of yet another big time illegal drug thug only ensures more violence and death worldwide with the inevitable redistribution of ill-gotten blood money among thugs. That's a big news story here lately. That, uh, but instead, let us all work hard to help our own family farms grow more crops here legally and safely with resulting tax revenues only helping our own self-sufficiency and thus our own national security. So help save our troops worldwide by demanding freedom for farmers here at home. And I know from my own experience with a coma-inducing traumatic brain injury that the, re that the reintroduction 
of tetrahydrocannabinol into my bloodstream greatly aided my ongoing recovery from my own brain injury. And many of our returning heroic, heroic armed service personnel who suffered their own traumatic brain injuries, and uh, I think their doctors here at home should have medicinal marijuana as an option to help to help them best uh, treat their patients, especially including our returning troops. So stop the ongoing counterproductive wars we are waging worldwide with instead liberty for family farms here at home. It's a win, 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 win situation. Our nation can best lead the world by example with peace and liberty. Stop the killing. Love is all you need. Can I ask questions now? Or you gonna oh, yeah, I'm done. Well, I just want, so this is a speech that you wanted to give at city council. Yeah. And you were thrown out. Well, the, the story there was the, the city, yeah, I, did, I didn't get, it wasn't this particular speech, but I, I write up a different speech every every time I'd appear. Okay. And I just, uh, the mayor He's said. He's more prolific at it, too. It, because the way he pronounced his name. And what was so idiotic about it was the mayor said, okay, Mr. Reed, proceed. <laughs> I mean, he said it. So he, so he knows your name and knows yeah, who you yeah. are. He's called him out for years. And, 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 and so I said it with my own little uh, dramatic tinge to it, a uh, little performance art with Ronnie Reavers. And he, that pushed him over the edge. For some reason, he said, okay, so you're you out of here. So you were kicked out of city council, and you were kicked out for how long? For a year. So you were banned, banned from going for to city council for a year. year because of the way you pronounce your name. Isn't that well, idiotic? Is that what they said wow. specifically, or is it because something else? No, that was it. Is that what, that's what he said. Yeah, and, but what, what was he never right? said why. Actually, well, he just gotta said be, there's got to be a reason why. I mean, it happened well, to me, and there wasn't a reason here's, given. Here's what I would say: if you're going to be talking about one specific item, and this is something that we mentioned earlier, if you're going to be talking about one specific item, go ahead, and that's cool. But if you're going to be adding all this other stuff, then what do I want to listen to? No, well, citizens' it's communication. One, it's not one specific item. Citizens' communication. It's up to the citizens to talk about whatever subjects. They want to. And mine just started with my pronunciation of my name. That's where he cut me off. That's right. where he threw me out. In my three thing, uh, no other city council member stood up for you. That's right. Okay, you mean that Nicole actually mentioned you in an article? Nicole, yeah, the, a front page article in a recent copy. And you think the, uh, the, the black community would be better off if they could grow marijuana? Oh, no doubt, the entire nation. Don't they have enough trouble already? Marijuana is not a problem drug. It's it's uh, it's a medicine. It's a medicine, and I can testify to that. Again, I had a traumatic okay. brain injury. I was in a coma. Sir. I understand. And when I had uh, THC reintroduced into my bloodstream, wow! It could be a coincidence, but the very next day, when the, after a couple girls shared a joint with me, I woke up the next day. <laughs> And I knew, Did I knew why I was in the hospital. I knew what had happened to me. I knew the name <clears> of the kid <throat> next to me. I mean, you Ronnie know, had been hit by a car, I basically. Was, well, yeah. Did you smoke a pot when you got hit by a car? <laughs> of course not, no. I, but I had smoked previously, which is what I want to say also. <laughs> oh, that's uh, my case. <laughs> no, you got for, stoned, you got run over. No, and then no, you had to no, get stoned no. again to come out of it. No, I didn't get stoned before I got on my bicycle. I, I had smoked pot before <laughs> that happened to me. And, and this is what I do want to say. I believe I, that. I, I do not believe children should do drugs of any kind. I, and so say what I uh, do, what I say, not what, not, not what I do. I mean, I, I started when I was young, way, way, way too young. Thank you, Father, my dad. Uh, but, uh, and he was in on that. But, but uh, I, if I had children, I would greatly uh, discourage any kind of drug use. <laughs> until you adulthood, and it, you know, for the reason your brain doesn't stop growing until um, you're like on, 25. On behalf of Chief Ostevedo, I'd like to welcome you for uh, welcome you to Austin, where at least the cops don't rape you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not make too much fun of my old friend, the chief. Now, I don't know, I don't know where he came up with that statement. From, I can't follow that. I fell, follow up. With. Yeah, he made a statement of you know about the uh, jogger girl that that went viral. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. all over everywhere. It is. It's sure all, it went all over the country. <laughs> Hopefully, a statement doesn't go all over the country about it. At least the cops don't rape you here. Yeah. Everything yeah. did. Uh, especially especially it did? this statement. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, I hate to say this, Ronnie, but you know, my wife makes me watch these stupid shows on America's <laughs> stupidest, dumbest, whatever it is. And I'm thinking about how some kids out there smoking pot, get on their cars, start doing these pranks, and next thing you know, you know what I mean? Uh, America's funniest home videos or something oh, like that. Mm -hmm. uh. 
So, we okay, got people out of it anyway. so, so I want to go back. Okay, so you were kicked out of city council because of the way you pronounce your name. That's right. And they and banned me for a said. year, okay. but after about seven months, the lawyers got through to somebody and somebody called me and said, oh, I guess we can let you back in. After, so, after a mere uh, seven months. And so then you also go to the Travis County Commissioner's Court That's as well. right. <coughs> I've been going to the Travis County Commissioner's Court every week for well over five years. Five years. And, I, and I speak to these various issues, peace. Love other because things. mind you, the commissioner's court, they do all these little hearings during the day when most people are at work. So a lot of people are not able to go down to the commissioner's court That's and right. city council Very and true. let their voice be heard. That's right. So you actually chose to go down to the city council, go down to the commissioner's court right. while most people are at work and let your voice be heard. And what happened? They, uh, I, I happened to speak, uh, take my citizen communication segment at the uh, Travis County Commissioner's Court okay. and I addressed the Chinese delegation who were sitting there in the studio and uh, well, I didn't address them particularly but I addressed the Chinese regime in a uh, not too complimentary way because I'm I'm pro-life I don't think it's right to kill children and as he, everybody hopefully knows in China it's not a question of choice yeah. they execute babies out the wazoo and I call it the Chinese ongoing war on the unborn. Like after nine months, the baby comes out, the baby's ki screaming, hollering, crying, and they actually oh, yeah. kill the baby. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, they. So you chose to pick. It's a girl. So you chose to pick this topic and discuss it at, at the commissioner's court while the delegation was there to yeah. let them know that you know what yeah. your thoughts. Yeah, how were. I felt about it. As an right. American citizen, awesome. I thought I'd inform them that not all of us go along with it. And because of that, uh, you were. I was a uh, uh, Bisco had me taken, Judge Bisco, had me taken out of the chambers. I was put in handcuffs, mm. put in handcuffs out in front of the county commission, uh, in front of that building, and I eventually talked the senior police officer into the idiocy of it, and they, well, okay, they took off my handcuffs, and they said, get the hell out of here. You mean you didn't get deported? You know, not, uh, not, you what? Mean, you mean you didn't get deported? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no, they just kindly, kindly said, get the hell out of here. It is Austin. You had to throw the deported thing in there, didn't you? Uh, it is Austin. Our folks get deported. <laughs> <laughs> Only if they uh, done some of the <coughs> Well, it, it, know, so that's how I hope you, you know uh, Clay Defoe and Ronnie Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, sir. Well, it's kind of it, hard not to if you've ever been to City Hall or County Commission. <laughs> I know you've been there many times. It is Austin where at least the cops don't rape you. Yeah. <laughs> Twice in the so show already, hey. Yeah. That's right. almost as bad as Carl Gray. That's probably worse than Carl Gray. Okay. All right, so so you were kicked out of commissioner's court, and how long were you kicked out, kicked out of the commissioner's court? Well, only for a mere four months, but as it turns out, I haven't gone back. Uh, I'm, I'm preparing to uh, uh, my legal... Uh, attempt to, to make them know that what they did was wrong and that's and see, ongoing and see my thing is I don't you know I may not just agree with what you say and uh, you know as long as you follow the guidelines they set at the commissioners court and city council I may totally dislike exactly what you're saying but you know what you have a right to say it as long as you're being respectful you're not using any profanity and they tell you hey you have three minutes to give your speech then you give your speech in three minutes they don't have to agree with what you're saying they have no right to kick you out you are a citizen you know, of Travis County, of Austin, and you have a right to have your voice be heard. Well, and, the, and Judge Bisco and the mayor need to be ashamed of themselves and they need to remind themselves of, you know, a lot of things that have gone on, yeah, you know, in history. Reminded and the Chinese delegation. Especially America, Judge Bisco. Can... He really should be ashamed of himself. Yeah. yeah. Especially him. And, and they all swear, yeah. all those office holders swear to uphold, protect, and defend our Constitution. All right. The First Amendment of the Constitution. Uh, they swear to defend know. it and protect it, and they stomp on it. They they uh, shred it in front of everybody. They're yeah. no different from it. the police officers back in the 60s, the 50s, and the 40s. You know, just violate you know the law and do whatever you will because you dislike what someone is doing because you don't like it. Yeah. And when it comes to freedom of speech, I so much agree with you. They don't have the right. Obama they can care. disagree all they want. Is, we ain't care. Uh, Obamacare right there. It's not just the Constitution either. It's the city code. It's the state constitution. There's multiple levels that are being violated here, and that's, and that's right. really uh, if they can't even follow the the city code or Robert's rules of order. I mean, we've got 
we've got some major problems. So. Well, yeah. I think well, you know, the, at city council, the good thing is that all of them are gone. You know, we can true. only tolerate, what, eight, nine more months? Except for the one that's going to become mayor. Well... I don't know about Unless that. Unless we can, are you going to run for mayor again? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, you're not mayor, yeah. but I've been thinking about it. Dis you, District 9 seems kind of shallow as far as competition. Where's yes. Nine? That's right. You can only it's, uh, sit Central. I'm kind of wow. north central, but uh, it goes so. through I South Austin, too. Run for mayor? I think they haven't. Do you, do you, yeah. still have that, do you still have that sofa available for rent? The what? You have that sofa available? That sofa. Remember how we were talking about, you oh, know, yeah, that yeah, I, yeah. if I'm going to run for mayor, I'm going to live at your house. Uh -huh. I'm going to rent your sofa. <laughs> I live in Maynard. Uh -huh. I'm going to go rent your sofa so That's I can right. be mayor of Austin. I can, it can be Chico on the map versus the map. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll be Chico. Your, Let's be expanded. Your, your so you're going to be a carpet backer. Your status. <laughs> exactly. I'll be Hillary Clinton only on the Republican side. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Be interesting. Yeah. That'd be cool. That's okay. uh, State Representative Donna Dukes lives in Flipperville. She doesn't live in her district either. Yeah. So, <laughs> why not? Everyone else does. Uh, more and more of them do that. There yeah. you go. Mm. Yeah. So you have to August 18th, right, to decide. That's right. It, it'll that. happen before that for a lot of people. I know. Oh, yeah. Right now, <clears> I know in District 3, we have like, which is where I live, we have about five or six persons. I was going to say something else, but persons that are. <laughs> that threw their hat in the ring. You know? Already, huh? Oh, yeah. What do you think it's of this? It's early. Hmm? What do you think of this? Well, I think Candidates. that for our democracy, it's healthy to have all mm -hmm. these individuals be able to run for office because you're confined to a small area. There's going to be a runoff election. Oh, definitely. And uh, we as in a democratic society should make everything possible to ensure that people are engaged and involved. And we have been with this old racist former governor for way back when. <laughs> so well, but, we got but, the young people in there. Well, they're, they're all Democrats, so they can't be racist. Yeah, yeah that's right. Well, well, some of the worst. <laughs> well, I mean, well, right here in Travis County, we, we're, you know, we got an early voting going on right now. Yes, and yes, do you know that we're on track for it to be very slow, mm. one of the slowest voter turnouts in a very long time? Thanks. Right now, we're on track for 10% of registered voters to actually come on and participate in this election right now. 10%. Uh, it's 10%. Be a big, uh, big uh, election coming up. Yeah, ten percent. Midterms. We got all the Supreme Court, all that in coming up. So right now we're going to put the same people back in office, the same people who and I was just driving down Guadalupe, um, over by UT yesterday, and I was driving down. I noticed how they, you know, added a big huge bike lane. Yeah. And then moved the little little put the little bus stops. On Guadalupe and, mm -hmm. and shrunk those lanes down, and you know and that. You remember, I told you that cost two million dollars every one mile. Oh yeah, and we could have done it for half that price and still made profit. Two million dollars a mile uh. for bike lanes. Uh, I was going to ask you something. Uh, you were also exited, but but the mayor, right, okay. from the city mm -hmm. council chambers. For yes, the that's right. Same reason or kind of close to the. Same About reason. ten months ago. Um, during a speech, yeah, I was speaking Did about Barn Springs. Well, articulated all that. Well, it, uh, you know, I was making some points on Barn Springs, and as soon as I mentioned uh, the blind salamander and a few different issues with the renovations, <laughs> it was sick. The cops. I was surrounded by about five guys, including uh, the mayor's bodyguard, uh, Mike Bowen. Didn't I and see that? they didn't let me finish my speech. And I'm still upset about that, and. Uh, I don't, I don't Get They're that. still going to hear from me on I just that don't, one. I don't get that. You don't have to like what a person is saying. That's it. They have a right to give their three minutes oh, or whatever what it is to time. Doing. I just don't get that. I don't <laughs> understand What's that. What's going to be interesting no, in this mixture of 10-1 is what majority is going to be formed. No, is there going to be mm -hmm. a majority of six? And no one speaks up at a city council no. when you're thrown out. Nope. And that's no, the thing is it's not just the mayor. It's every single that's officer right. there that tells you something um, about it right is there. in on it. Yeah. So. No, the, the city manager, the lawyers, nobody says anything on our behalf. Right. And they all know what the Constitution says. You're saying. right. You proceed. You're all the time making a nuisance of yourself. Uh -huh. They, if, well, the city lawyers at the end it's of the day. It's your right to, huh? Well, but at the end of the day, it's the city check. They're not going to support us. City yeah. attorneys do not support the public. They support the entity, the government. The public don't write their checks. That's, very true. That's who they represent. But we uh, will have better representation with, with I'll, I'll, single I'm member hoping, districts. I'm hoping so. Yeah. It couldn't be we any worse, that that's for so sure. Hard, you know, yeah, they all really did. And, Hell, uh, eight mice showed up for a couple of them. Yeah.
so yeah, you know, it's, it's open open season. Let's go, you know, let's move forward with this new form of government. Yeah. What about you, Gavino? You'd be, no, you'd be a great no, on the council. I'm, I'm, I'll be hitting 60 soon. I'm mm -hmm. kind of more focused in uh, supporting and promoting young people like you, you know. <laughs> Go, go in there and, and kick butt for us, you know. Any, we'll any, be on the sideline and any young and you. young and up and coming Latinos. Another one right there. No, any young and up and coming Latinos in the neighborhood? Uh, to me, it don't matter what color it is, as long as they deliver. Yeah, <laughs> there home. you go. It's like Riley Amen. told me when he first won the election, he called me, met for coffee. What well, do you I think? Street hard shirt on here, don't I? He asked me, do you think I should uh, hire a Latino in my office? I said, no. I mean, you yeah. deliver. I don't care what color it is. Ah, I like that. <laughs> You know, you're contributing right. well, to the show but again. You know, <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? Uh, look out. You know, 50 years from now or maybe more, people are going to, kids are going to, you know, back then, these were issues. Yeah. You know, because well. even today, I know a lot of young kids in the schools and whatnot, even my nephews and nieces, race really doesn't come an issue. Not like when we were growing up. No. It's and only an issue with the older generation. Right, with the older generation that, uh, you know, that still has that mindset of way back when and it's real difficult to break what kind of people are running against you and your and your precinct is it a young fella or what no no it's this other lady that's probably about my, my age and she's not even active she this is one of those that Lori and Pio Renteria put up to run against me because as Lou like director I work with both parties mm -hmm. Republican mm -hmm. and like Democrat and the yellow dog the yellow, yellow dog Democrats didn't like that but yeah. to me, it doesn't matter whether I win or got not. Got pictures I mean, of you with Ted Cruz and uh, huh? They got pictures of you with both our senators. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, what hurt me the most is that I wasn't eligible to work the elections because I'm on the ballot. I'd prefer to do that than you know be a. Yeah, it is. It's, I can't be. I can't be judged. Cause I can't do all day. I gotta, you know, I gotta do my breathing treatment every six hours or something like mm. this. My my precinct didn't have any. Anybody at it? Let's say you run and you were elected. What would be the first thing you'd look at or want to look at from the city once you were in office? First thing, yeah. cutting first out thing. cutting out the incentives. Uh, recently, they just um, had a couple go through last week with uh, WebSense and Dropbox, and it's it's just not fair. They're not available to local businesses. It's always people moving in from out of town, and, and we give literally tens, if not hundreds, of millions in these incentives away. It just doesn't make any sense, and it's it's not healthy for and our then city. Then you see other companies or corporations down the street with no government right, help. Right. They move right, on, move right. in on their own. Who are actually local? Yeah, it actually makes small businesses have right. to shut down mm -hmm. because uh, you're taking wealth and redistribute re redistributing it. It's basically socialism for the rich. <clears throat> like Apple Computer, one of the richest companies in the history of the world, mm. got a big chunk of money from who? You and me, people, to get them to move here. If we hadn't huh? given it to them, they'd have moved to uh, Raleigh Durham where they were going to give them that money. Well, great. Uh, you know, See, then I'm we'd have that all that on, money. On, 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 uh, on what he says there, I, I did a lot of work in my dump truck for our Samsung. If we hadn't given Samsung all that money, somebody else was. And look at all the jobs we got out of it. And now that the tax time is over, they're paying taxes. Look at all the money we're making. Well, All these small, the small businesses that came up to contract with Samsung, to supply Samsung. Well, people move to Austin no matter what we pay them. I mean, people right. want to move this here. This ain't about paying them. This is about we gave Samsung an initiative to move here and build these plants. They did, and they started not only hiring local, but buying parts and supplies local. And meanwhile, not paying taxes. But While now they're paying taxes, have to keep and they're paying good taxes. It all goes to your brakes. And it's a, you're right, it's a distribution of, of, of taxes. But the distribution comes from those individuals that are working for the big company. So that they can, it's, <coughs> it's similar to trickle down economics. These guys are going to be able to have the money to go ahead and pay for 10 other people, 10 extra people to hire them and allow them to pay whatever tax, you know, city, city taxes, state taxes, whatever you want to call it, so that they can in turn spread that distribution out there. So that they can, so that they, because if not, if they didn't have that money, then. We couldn't have those ten people that are going to come in to work. Raleigh Durham would have. What do you think? Well, to well, me, it's all Raleigh about. Durham. You have to ask, what is the proper role of government? And for me, it's yeah. not about growing the economy. It's about protecting our individual rights how, and liberties as be, Americans. How would the, the, the city? 
how would it not be the city's responsibility to not create growth? Yeah, I mean, that's not what government is uh, instituted it's for. It's called infrastructure. That's not why we started government. I want to build a, a proper, I want to flush my toilet. Well, you know, when, when you get into that mindset and thinking of what you just mentioned, mm -hmm. it, it, it's all part of uh, government growing every year, every year, every year, because you're accustomed to it and you're used to it and you don't want to go in, entertain any other financial approach other than we'll let government take care of. Right. That, well, it's, it's, it's know, not it's government like taking care of it. It's, it's giving us the opportunity to, to create No, it's a business for, right, right, To create see, businesses and to create like, wealth for other individuals. It's like in a small community. Let's say you have a small community and the city and the county <laughs> own 90% of the land. That's scary. A whole lot there. You know. It's Would you true. be willing to give incentives to bring marijuana growers into town? No. I think there should be freedom. Across the board, and people who want to They're move consistent. to Austin. consistent. I like that. What if, uh, yeah, what <laughs> if. Uh, should be uh, done in jail, like that's for sure. Does. I'm sorry? What if Raleigh Durham, North Carolina does? Carolina, or let, 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 they can jump Raleigh off Durham. that cliff. Let's, let's, put it in this bit. let's put it in this bit. <clears throat> say, the, say the state legalizes pot where you can sell it. Yeah, we were getting off okay. of the weed thing here. Well, no, be great. We, can go, we can go back so we can put it, so we can, fo so we can focus on, on some of the items that they're... We lost our TV. Uh, yeah. uh, our TV's broken. <laughs> oh my goodness, they don't want to hear what, they don't want to see me do this. <laughs> 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 okay, but, anyway. but anyway, so we have, um, so we, we have the opportunity to create businesses oh, here for, for pot, okay, where you can have pot shops here. And the city says, okay, great. We're going to give Johnny Reefer seed. Ronnie. Then, Ronnie, sorry, Ronnie, sorry. I, sorry, it's the whole Johnny Oppersley thing. Yeah, right. My apologies. Okay. Ronnie, okay. Sorry, I, I got to do that right. I got to get that right eventually. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Have enough experience. Yeah. I, I don't have enough experience on the, on the puff, puff game. I'm yeah. sorry. But we have, but we have Ronnie Weaver, see, the, the opportunity to build a business here where he can, he's going to be able to hire 10 people to, mm -hmm. to, to create a shop where you can sell legally. And they say, okay, we're going to give you X amount. Of, we're going to give you an incentive where you don't have to pay taxes for ten years, and and be able to, to create your growth. Would you be? Would you be able to? Would you want to do something like that? I would say I would rather uh, spend my money where it seems like the uh, most productive mm -hmm. and not rely on taxpayers or government <laughs> officials or somebody else to give me some special deal in order to, in effect, bribe me. To come here. I mean, if I choose to open up a, a marijuana distribution center or something here in, in Austin, Texas, the live music capital of the known universe, well, that would, you know, there are enough incentives just uh, here here in the great well, city of Austin. What if you want to talk with your incentive? You don't want to go there? They got plenty of live music and everything. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, that's, I'm open to the idea. I'd like to do my own research and find out what, what would be the best uh, opportunity available. So we had both of them, and they say, okay, it, if you had both options, and, and New Orleans says, sorry, we can't give you any incentives for you to come over here. And the, and the city well, of Austin says, that. we want you here, and we, wanna, oh. we, want to, we want to give you a, a tax break so you don't have to pay taxes. Do whatever you want to do with the money. Hire more people. We don't care what you want to do. But we want you to hire, have your business here so you can spur growth. Well, I agree with Clay. I don't think that's the role of government, not with taxpayer dollars. They, uh, we shouldn't be picking uh, winners and losers. We shouldn't be. But it's not taxpayer money. It's not pay taxpayer dollars. It's your money. It's your money that would have what? to be paid. It would be your money that you would have to pay the city government that they're saying, don't pay it. Well, when you say there's an incentive, you're implying that there's going to be a tax on it. And no, there's, there's an incentive of <laughs> saying you don't have to pay. It's an issue, too. It, it's, it's like saying, here's your earned income credit. Well, if, if they say, <laughs> you don't have to pay taxes, Which is what you know who is, who is going to be paying taxes? It's the rest mom of us. Mom and pop. It's the rest of us. Now, I don't want to punish mom and pop After because so of many years, you're gonna be paying taxes deal. Too. That's right. Well, that's, uh, and so the more we're all uh, uh, I have ripped to off by the tax here. system, we need to uh, uh, rise well, together and put it in. We into need it. to talk about Colorado. They've been talking about all the money they're going to make off taxes. Of course, we talked out there in the lobby about that because I'm not for... If, if Colorado wants to say, okay, we'll take this, or this million, billion dollars or whatever the amount they claim to be and say we're going to reduce everybody's taxes by that much amount, that'd be all right. But they're not going to do that, are they? I'll tell you what, if a little, a little Girl Scout can figure out how to make some money, then I, I think yeah. businesses can, should, should be able to figure out how to make yeah. 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 The little Girl Scout, knows she, she, she knows how to go and stand in front of that store and sell about two grand worth of Girl Scout cookies. Mm. I think that, you know, 
other That'd businesses That'd be a good place to out. have them. That's that's right. She sold 100 boxes? They're, they're 100 yeah. boxes, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's $4 yeah. a pop. In front of the medical marijuana storefront. $4 yeah. a pop for, for a box. That's how many boxes? Intelligent 100 boxes. young lady. Bucks for, for, and what, in, in what, two hours? She spent. She made 400 bucks. Well, that, well, and the value right. of those darn cookies are, is even is less. Yeah. <laughs> that's another story altogether. I, I, that's my, that's my. She did good. She did good. She did good. Anyway. Colorado looks to make a lot of tax dollars off of this, which, of course, I was uh, rep uh, representative of Workman. I really don't favor doing all this, but if they do, they're going to make tax dollars, but they're not going to reduce the tax burden that the taxpayers are paying. They're just going to add those tax dollars right on top of right. what they already got. Put it in their pockets is what they're going to yeah. do. But so I'm against that. It's interesting that the government will make something legal that was illegal as long as they get a piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give me my taxes, and you can sell all the pot you want. Well, let me, let me just say this one thing. Yeah, that, yeah. that marijuana Treaty. has not been mm -hmm. illegal forever. In fact, our founding father, George Washington himself. 1912, wasn't it? He, when they made it illegal. But George Washington and many of our founding fathers, since then, they grew hemp marijuana. In fact, George Washington himself grew it and smoked it. Well, back then they grew it for industrial uses. As they could today, and they still can. We we used to make our uh, ships that we that sail the sea. We, we the uh, sails the ropes. Hemp, hemp marijuana can be made into all kinds of things. It's one of the most uh, potentially it's got a lot beneficial of crops uses, but you known can't to man. Kind of natural, natural. Well, no, not all all parts of all all uh, marijuana plants are good for smoking, but. That's a, it's a, it's a diverse it, plant. It's a very beneficial plant on many different you can levels. You grow it where it's all stem to make fiber. You can grow it where it's all seed to make oil, or you can grow it so it's got some little buds that you see at the, at the TV commercials. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you grow it, yeah. Well, actually, the difference between hemp and and marijuana, marijuana is the flowering. You can uh, make version. it where it's so that's but the flower. female plant. It's the same plant. Females are always a. Uh, they're, they're a flower. <laughs> they're, they're a gift to all of us. Phone and, calls and start now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get the message in over Probably here. If you guys are friends with me on Facebook, you know, I don't have my telephone. You can't call right me now. up. Mm. <laughs> so what else have y'all been? Oh, you've been up, John. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, been working or trying studying? to make it in a career as a, a radio salesman, working uh -oh. for a, a nonprofit radio station at a hundred point one FM uh, Sun yes. Radio. So. Uh, Trying to Not grow that and that no, <laughs> no diff different station. Uh, we're a music oh, okay. station, but just do a lot to prom promote the uh, Austin music scene. So KDRP. Come see us down guys, at where sometime be doing? on Wednesday. What are you guys going to be doing for South by Southwest? Uh, we'll be all over the place. We'll be uh, in the mornings at the Intercontinental Hotel. Um, we'll be at Saxon Pub at night. Uh, afternoons, we'll be at El Mercado. So come on out, enjoy the live music, and come by and say hey. So you guys, so you're actually going to set up at different yep. venues? Yeah, we're very active. We're very, we got a small staff, but a uh, really dedicated core of, of volunteers as well. And um, so all, we've got a lot of great local businesses that underwrite out, us and support us. You should come out to uh, Central Texas Dental Works on March 2nd, which is okay. Texas Independence Day. All right. That's great. Fun. Okay. And on that day, we're actually going to um, debut our Bitcoin ATM. Wow. Oh. We're actually, and we're actually going to do something different. We're actually going to have uh, two Bitcoin ATMs. Right? One is going to be on a trailer. It's going to be a mobile unit. Mm -hmm. They'll be able to drive it around doing South by Southwest and just park it at different little venues. When people are standing in line, they can buy and sell Bitcoin at wherever you know, they stop and go. Um, and then the other one's going to be inside <coughs> the gun store in the lobby there. And mm -hmm. we're actually going to have a, a lady come out who actually, I think she wrote the Bitcoin song. She's going to come out and sing the song. <laughs> We're going to have some other bands there Great. that are going to be playing. We're also going to have a comedian do all the introductions. Um, he's not going to joke about Bitcoin, is he? No, he's not going to okay. make a joke about Bitcoin, but <laughs> he's going to make a joke about the fact that it's Texas Independence Day, and we're going to be independent and come out with a different currency and, and in a gun store. That sounds yeah. great. All that right. sounds like what an awesome combination. Yes, Where sir. are you all located? Um, on 321 West Ben White. So come on in. Awesome. Come on I don't know out. if we're supposed to uh, talk about money like I don't know about Bitcoin anyway. There's no price. So we didn't have any pizza since she left? Yep. Why didn't you come and say hello? Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not even going to go to the last part there, okay? You read the final part on but, that? But, but 
Uh, Clay, tell us some of the other, <laughs> the other stuff you're involved in and everything. Well, um, you know, I've always kind of been uh, independent-minded, so um, Texans for Accountable Government is a group I support and have been less involved with recently, but highly recommend that people check out their website, tagtexas.org, and um, go to the meetings and get involved. Um, there's a meeting tonight. Is there's right? a meeting tonight. Speak of the devil. And What's going on? You to be here so. on the show as opposed to being at the meeting. Well, this is important. That's we we got to reach people. He's so. going straight there after this. Maybe. Yeah. <coughs> I thought he has his coffee, his special coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You didn't have your special coffee. Lonnie, yeah, show me the special coffee, coffee yeah. you brought. Oh, uh, special, yes. It's. Mmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's regular coffee, folks. I, I, I've been able to smell it, so well, it's okay. There's and there's... everyone goes, whoa. Oh, no. Why are you busting down here, man? On a whoa. serious, serious note. All right, go ahead. Our condolences to State Rep, our workman, on the passing of his wife. Oh, oh. Didn't even know that didn't wow. Know that right. I just talked about how I sat it with him on the yeah. marijuana issue. Yeah. When that, what was wrong? I don't know. I called his office to set up, invite him to one of our LULAC meetings. Oh, wow. Mm. District meetings, and that's when the staff told me that. Uh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Keith, I mean, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is. Uh, so. He's been on this show He's a couple times. He's been on this show, and he always, when he runs into us at the Capitol, he always Lulac, stops to say hello. He always stops to say hello. Uh, He's been a good friend of Lou Black, oh yes. I understand. Oh, yes. Been very, very involved. You know, them Republicans getting you in trouble again. Yep. <laughs> and uh, he supported the driver's license. He sure did. I always bring that up two sessions ago. And we should have passed that bill. We, we wouldn't have been, we'd have, that would have solved a lot of problems. And there was no amnesty in it. They kept screaming, no amnesty. There was no amnesty in it. Did anyone read the most recent report on the Travis County Jail in the city? No. What was Where that? they were, I mean, a new, about. Is this still about there? Almost like six million dollars or more, probably more. What, what that do you the mean? city's paying the county to. Remember when they consolidated I've jails? I've heard of this, yeah. You know, the city used to book your. They, the city used to have their own jail cells for uh, misdemeanors, okay. and the only way you graduated out of. Right. I mean, I never, never got that far. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what's you? I can't remember. This is jail. I'm not lying to you. You remember? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you wouldn't have to go to 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 the to the county, hmm. but under uh, Amigo, which was a plan way back when for Metro government. Yeah. Remember that effort? Uh, they took some of those ideas and. I'm still thinking about my jail, my my fun at uh, Greg Hamilton's holiday camp there. I think you're telling jokes. They say, yeah, you got a strap. Say, what are you going to do? Throw me in jail? Well, I was already in jail, but yes, they can make it worse. <laughs> so they tell you to shut wow. up. You really do need to shut up. <laughs> Just cracking some jokes, you know. They want some harm in that. Freedom anyway. of speech. Yeah. Some okay. people can't well, handle it. Anyway, yeah, so I'm not sure. I, never mind. Okay. Go ahead. He threw me off guard. I'm, I'm having okay, a so bush Austin, moment so here. Is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm at a, a Perry moment here. Perry moment, <laughs> yeah, Perry oops. moment. You, you got the oops. But anyway, so, okay, so Austin is paying Travis County. Oh, yeah, the jail. The, the jail. Austin is paying Travis County to for booking. And there was a recent article in the American Statesman where they did a financial analysis and they're paying like five or six times more than when they were doing it on their own. Hmm. Wow. So do you think our sheriff is well, cutting on the side? Or? Well, I don't know what's <laughs> causing it, but I think it's time that the city council needs to visit, revisit that uh, interlocal agreement once again. Well, maybe mm. after nine months when we get a new city council, yeah. maybe yeah. Right, we proceed it. going out there and tell us it two cents because on it. Because right now, right now, <laughs> if you're and where was that? Where was that? Where did they, huh? they talk about that? When? Yeah, where? What, what paper? It's the American it? States one. It's the States one. American States. But it's been a while since they did that. No, this is the more recent one, like two days ago. No, I mean since they passed that. Oh, yeah, It's yeah. been a couple of years, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's been going on for a while. <coughs> oh, yeah. But you just wrote your support for the sheriff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're supporting the sheriff. That was the on the uh, on, uh, Facebook. ICE thing? No, no, just in general. There was no mention of of any, yeah, any I like issue. it because I support the sheriff, too. It's a Democrat you know, I support. You know, the sheriff deals with many issues, not yeah. just one. Uh, He's always been very professional about it. the sheriff's it, office, you know. As far as I know. And uh, so. I mean, it was APD that, that stole you out, right? It's well, the yeah, sheriff it, at the county. No, yeah. it was the sheriff. That, uh, well, sheriff deputies. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, they had to do what they had to do. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my goodness. Okay, okay, so so what we're talking about is the city of Austin has paid hundreds of thousands of dollars on top of millions that taxpayers were already spending mm. for its criminal suspects to be booked into the Travis County Jail over the past year, quietly siphoning money away from other projects. Mm. That one. So for more than a decade, the city has paid a negotiated fee to the county to fingerprint, take mug shots, and to detain Austin police suspects until they are either released on bond or transfer to county custody. This year, the city's fees for, for that service topped $6.5 million. Mm. I've been thinking, oh, that's half price. What do y'all say? Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. There. He'll be getting <laughs> <laughs> right quick. Half price. Yeah, half price. And we still make, make a good good living. Yes, half price. I can believe it. You see, because the, the, well, most of my, the majority of misdemeanors here are out in what? 24 hours or right, less. Right. I wouldn't know. Right. Yeah. Yet. You remember. You remember. We remember. <laughs> remember. <laughs> remember? There's, a, there's a thing on Facebook. I want to stay until they give me breakfast bags. I, uh, but do they, uh, oh, <laughs> will they do, the, will they give you the Acevedo, Acevedo special? Uh, What's that? It's Austin. It's At Austin. least the cops are not raping you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Every time. <laughs> Does per, so what did it, what does it come out per? Inmates? No, it doesn't have uh, that part. It doesn't have a per no. inmate. Mm -mm. Uh, no, mm -mm. they didn't break it down. Incarceration? Of course not. That's, you always but that's just for story. this year or one year? Yep. That's, Last that's year? one year, $6.5 Six. million. Dollars. So we need to do the math. We need to do the math. Yeah. 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 With the math. Yeah, he, how he many have been arrested? Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, how many got booked for a year? Within a year. I bet you can book a lot of damn people for that much money. They do. Oh, no, all the people that got booked wind up paying fines. Where did that money go? So you could stay at the Hilton Inn and stay probably. <laughs> That's where it all goes. So where does the money go? That's a good question. That's the question, yeah. Where does all the money go for fines? When, Something you know, tells me we better not ask the chief or the sheriff that right now. <laughs> the chief, because he's probably full, and the, and the sheriff. No, well, but it, it's, I mean, they deal with all the, these issues all the time. And once public becomes sensitive to those and fall into their then they do whatever they want and hey mm -hmm. no one one no one put a gun to them and said you will be our you know uh chief of police or you are gonna run you well, know that much money so be chief of but you know you get people elected or people in positions like this and once they're in there they become so cold and so unaccessible you know Not that you the know, chief's always, I mean, he's been oh, yeah, no, the three, chief, four chief's times. always been accessible, you know. The sheriff's been on here a couple times? Yeah, they, they, they've always been accessible. Uh, but the chief's always on uh, some TV or radio station. Well, he is in uh, elected, per se. He's, he's elected. appointed. The sheriff appointed. is pretty much easy to get to, too, though. The what? The sheriff, the sheriff has been yeah. pretty much easy to... Uh, yeah, but the sheriff has a different... Uh, measure yeah. of staying there. He's elected. He's an elected. What about the city council or the county commissioners? Do they ever come on? Or uh, we've had a couple. On, They're uh, afraid to we come had out. Commissioner They're Gomez come on last couple, yeah. uh, within a month. We've last had, month. Uh, two, two or three of the city council have been on it over the years. We know we aren't going to get Ron Davis here for. No, uh, Ron anything. Davis ain't going to come on. Bruce Todd. Either. Who's the bicycle ah, city, we've city had, council? We've uh, had, uh, Chris, Chris Riley. Chris Riley, he, he did a tape interview for me. We, we had uh, Commissioner Daugherty here. Yeah, Commissioner Daugherty's sure. been on. There you go. Oh, yeah. That's good. Right yeah. we, we for, the most, for the most part. We, got so our, hey, we have our Some political of ties. The Crater Park Show has political My ties. Ass 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 some of them are afraid to come on because they're afraid to sit in that hot seat and get the <coughs> And we've yeah. had some that, you know, no, Celia, no what's her name that won our, from our party? Celia, Celia Israel. Israel said, no, she won't come. Celia Israel just flat out. Andy away. Brown's another one that said he wouldn't Andy come Brown's on. Andy Brown's been on when he was, he was chair. He's been but on, they do I think, send, twice. They do send out a lot of phone calls. I received at least three of them today. Uh-oh, they want you. Yeah, they, 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 they will call, call me. But they, automatic, the automatic system, no. uh, it, you know, to get people to come out and vote. It was who called me? Oh, Kirk uh, Gus Garcia. I said, man, y'all let that man rest in the nursing home. Y'all keep pulling yeah, him out all the time. Man, you know, there's, more, yeah. oh, there's more Latinos in Austin, Texas than just Gus Garcia, you know. <laughs> Damn. That's uh, true. What kind of, they can, go, they can go for the slogan, Mas con Gus. Mas con Gus. There you go. Did, well, did you go to that thing on Saturday at the church? You went to yes, church? I did. Yes, I did. You went to church? No, it was, uh, they had a forum there, <laughs> uh, a forum. We got about four, four minutes. 
Yeah. Four minutes, yeah. I'd like to hear something about that. It was a very staged, obviously it was an immigration night. It was very staged, beautiful, very dramatic, very emotional. Uh, uh, Texas Project, Jim Harrington has chosen to make this a personal issue with the sheriff. He's running a campaign oh, against sheriff. the sheriff. And uh, you got a lady, a parent got up there and went all emotional. Started, I think she, I thought she was going to faint. She became so emotional that she's a victim, that her family was separated, and that her husband. I said, what'd your husband get busted for? <laughs> you did. Yeah. yeah, I bet you did. And what did she say? Yeah. Uh, well, I, yeah, it was the domestic violence. Oh. And she called him. Oh, you know. wow. <laughs> she counted they held him off and then deported him because he didn't. He so, wasn't, but anyway, it was oh, wow. it was a pretty much set up. Uh, I'm sorry, you know. Uh, we need to do better. When, I mean, I have my thing is like, if they're that serious about it, write up a resolution, forward it to these Democratic Council and the Democratic Commissioners yeah, Court, and they won't do And ask Obama it. to stop deportation now. They won't do it. Okay, they they're not going to do it. Because, uh, because they're racist. I know, they're let's not going to do gonna it. Admit, let's go ahead, let's go ahead and admit, go ahead and admit that part. You know, you, you've got, I'll give you this prime example. Austin has been sued by how many, how, how many civil lawsuits does Austin have right now? Well, we only got two much. We can't go okay. that much. They have the Wayne one because of housing. Well, all right. Because of minorities. Let's so. run right in them say something quick before you go. Well, y'all depart. What okay, your plans well, in the future? Uh, you got about uh, 40 seconds. I'm hoping that the uh, so-called leaders, schemers, in uh, City Hall and the county government uh, start reading the Constitution. Pay attention to it. You're supposed <coughs> to protect and defend and, uh, our, our you, you've obviously been smoking too much of that stuff. Pass it off. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Clint. Hey. Well, Ronnie has done a lot to fight for civil liberties in Austin, and one of the things he's done is uh, filed a, a federal civil rights lawsuit against nice. the entire city council Good. for what happened in August 2011. He's okay. doing it pro se. But if there's a, a civil rights attorney out there who's interested and uh, oh, okay. who has okay. cojones enough to do okay. it, well, that we call. Oh, yeah, we can't, can't call can't. out for action or something like that. Oh, yeah, no call action. Mr. Cargill, say something. You got about 40 seconds. Okay. On, uh, Anything you want to announce? On March 2nd, we will be at um, Central Texas Gun Works doing a grand opening for our uh, Bitcoin ATM. We have in the one that's going to be in the inside the lobby of Central Texas Gun Works and the one that we're going to put in a trailer. So we'll be the first. And also, the, the thing about this eight Bitcoin ATM, this will be the first one where it's real-time updates, mm. market mm -hmm. value. Mm -hmm. The first one in the world that, I'm wow. sorry, in the United States, it's real-time update market value. And we plan to invite the Latinos. We, we plan to invite the Latinos that will be recognized by, by they'll be given the Medal of Honor on March the eighteenth. Are we gonna have them on the And we're gonna invite them to our parade on, on we have our pre fourth of July parade on June twenty eighth. So we're gonna reach out and see what happens. All right. All see you next week. Uh no we got thirty seconds. Uh that's good because we do got the parade coming up. We got June teeth coming and up. And it will be beautiful. Yeah, thank you for having me back on. Well, <laughs> You have to go to work. Sometimes you work. Well, I got to pay, pay. You know, I am the 52 percent, the 53 percent. You are, so, and you just, you just have five minutes to walk. I'll be out there practicing it next out the alleyway on the back street. To me, this is a postcard picture, a Republican with Obamacare. That's the yeah, no, This is VA. This ain't Obamacare. All right, folks, come on. You guys take care. Okay, we're on. Uh, <laughs>